live from New York. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube, covering Rapid Miner Wisdom 2016. Brought to you by Rapid Miner. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Brick. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. Uh, this is the Cube. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. We're here at Rapid Miner Wisdom 2016, hanging out with the the data scientists. Uh, big announcements today. Rapid Miner version seven is out. Talking about citizen data scientists. We're here with Peter Lee. We're going to talk football, kickboxing, and a bunch of other stuff. Motorcycles. Peter. Welcome to theCUBE, great to see you. <laughs> great to see you, Dave. So you got the little kickboxing uh, Yeah, you know, um, you know, not serious about this getting stuff. better at golf, obviously I need a little bit of room for improvement in kickboxing. <laughs> um, great to spar with, got you can done. make a lot of contact, so. So it's your, your big customer event, you got to be excited. Yeah, New hugely Product excited. announcements today. Recent funding event, Nokia fantastic, came in. Fantastic, fantastic so stuff. Give us yeah, the update. I can't say enough about Nokia. Nokia is uh, just a tremendous investor, did a ton of diligence, we were really pleased. They're global. We're moving so rapidly, not just here in North America, but you know, roughly half our business is coming out of Europe. And Asia is a massive expansion opportunity, and Nokia is in all three places. We're delighted with them and our existing investor group. So the strategy of the company early on is to have an open core, a lot of users, right? and now you're in the process of sort of converting them into, into your paid model. Talk about that opportunity a little bit. Sure, I mean, we call ourselves by far and away the number one open source predictive analytics platform. And I'd say there's really three stages in which we engage with our fans. So first of all, data scientists, citizen data scientists, advanced business analysts, these guys can easily come in and start with very rapid prototyping. And then after you go through a prototyping phase, because especially in this era of big data, you don't know a priori what is going to be the best model or models that turn out to be the best predictors in a particular data set. Once you rapidly prototype, you can move to the next phase, which is you can really take, go beyond sample data size and really do validation. And that's typically where you're going to find tremendous new insights, gain better confidence, and then ultimately, and I think one of the reasons why Nokia invested is we have a very unique platform where you can move from the data science part, prototyping, validation, to really the business value part, which is operationalization, where you take those predictive insights and then you embed them downstream into human or automated intervention. And so that's pretty cool. So Nokia, it's a strategic investment. Uh, I mean, they've always had a big. No, Nokia Growth Partners is a so financial. It's, okay, so it's, it's, it's a financial investor. Now we're pleased. Nokia has also become a tremendous customer of ours, and we have much to announce in that regard. But Nokia Growth Partners, a financial investor, uh, they're, they're backed by Nokia, and that's you know, that's how we got connected. Well, time to is them. good. I mean, you know, you know this world, and, and you know things are. B rounds are getting tougher, and, and VCs are nervous out in your neck of the woods, so the timing's good, so you, yeah. you must feel good about that, right? I mean, yeah, absolutely. We were really pleased. We were able to demonstrate some pretty significant growth. We're doubling, tripling on multiple dimensions, and we were able to really step up, and I think now that we've really gone through a couple hundred clients, we're well past the validation stage, and it's really time to step on the gas. So we're making investments both on the product roadmap, and I think we talked a little bit about that. We made some announcements today. Uh, our, our fans are super excited about that, our customers here, as well as go to market. So you'll see a much kind of more aggressive pace of investment as we work with our customers on high value use cases. Well, I say the timing's great because I mean, this, this business, you know, the big data, Hadoop business, everybody went crazy. Tons of funding rolled in. You have, have a lot of companies doing this that looks like they're growing, but you know, they might be losing altitude, and there's a lot of people concerned when the funding dries up. You feel like you're in pretty good position, obviously. You just yeah, we feel like we're extremely well positioned. I think looking beyond the cash, I think one of the key elements as a disruptor in this market is that you can get started in an open source model at a price point that is very hard to beat. And you can continue to really grow and develop and invest in your analytics at 
you know, an ROI, which is simply world class. And I think that's really what's propelled us to the number one spot. Uh -huh. And so now we're building a much more aggressive community today, certainly a great example of that. I think you guys can see the momentum and the activity and the energy here. But we're also investing heavily in our marketplace. So you'll see that our partners, our SI partners and our other partners are really able to come into our marketplace and really engage with our community. The business scientist, the data analysts, the data scientists, the business analysts, citizen data scientists, and really have significant innovation. So we're extending our platform at a rate that's far beyond our core R&D and really embracing all of the solutions in the field that you see with our partners out in various use cases. So that core community, that core data science community is very valuable, useful. I mean, people would kill themselves to try to get the data scientists to be loyal to their, to their product. So that's great. Now, what about expanding beyond that? Is it time now, or is there going to be a, a big effort to, to do that beyond that? Well, you know, I'd say that, you know, if you think about the business of predictive analytics, the data scientists, that's really where the modeling is, being, is taking mm -hmm. place. But we really engage with a full portfolio of enterprise personas. It really depends on the use case. You know, for example, we've just heard from uh, one of our partners, Price Waterhouse, here in a financial services context, and really talking about using uh, joint solutions, rapid miner, married to Price Waterhouse expertise and transaction monitoring. In that use case, you're really engaged with not just data scientists who are modeling potentially fraudulent behavior, but really, and I think more substantively in an enterprise context, you're really dealing with the chief compliance officer, the chief risk officer, who's really looking to get in front of significant risk um, and cost inefficiencies in their business processes. And so that's a huge opportunity for us to really expand the vision and the embrace. So yes, we are moving well beyond just the data scientist and really heavily into line of business based use case based discussions. And I think that's true in financial services vertical, consumer products and retail, and then asset intensive businesses, midstream in oil and gas, manufacturing. There's a number of really um, interesting use cases now, and I think people who have gone up the data visualization curve mm. are now so comfortable with analytics, they now really want to move to the next step, which is really predictive analytics. Yeah, and, and business so outcomes, and we've been tracking this now for many, many years, oh. you know, well over five or six years before people knew what Hadoop was, and, and, and early on there was some some big winners, particularly in financial services markets, yep. some leading edge that's typical for financial services, <coughs> particularly coming out of the downturn. And then you had a lot of money pouring into experimentation. And, and a lot of the decisions were based on technical feasibility. Yeah, well, well, we can do that. But the ROI wasn't there. I'm sensing that's starting to change. There's more of an emphasis on starting with that business outcome. And you know, they're learning how to deal with the technical aspects yeah, of it. Yeah, it's a great a comment. It's a great comment. I would say we are well beyond the stage of proof of concept yeah. type mm -hmm. engagements across the board in the world of big data. I think it's a well understood paradigm. I think the challenge is really what I call a proof of value mm -hmm. engagement. And so it's really about the end result, which is if you can operationalize your predictive insights, there's significant ROI, and then let's engage and really kind of quantify how we can create a self-financing project that is one of three, that's going to drive one of three outcomes. You know, transformational, know your customer, so revenue-based ROI, customer and marketing analytics, um, radically reduced costs, so think about operational use cases, or reduced risk. You yeah, know? And, and so what's really seeing around the corner, not just what's directly and, in front and, of you. And cost reduction in terms of business process. Absolutely. You know, as opposed to what the ROI in the early days was kind of re re reduction of investment, you know, lowering the denominator of what it cost to build a data warehouse or whatever it was. And now you're talking about deeply embedding into the business process to, to yeah. cut costs. Yeah, well we just That's had another customer really talk pretty eloquently, Siemens, mm. just really talked about fantastic use cases around 
business process transformation. In, in audit. In audit. Yeah, we had uh, yeah. Laros, right? Yeah, uh, Boris. Boris, sorry, yeah, we had Boris. Boris on this right. morning. And oh, he was unbelievable. The number of questions right. that he got, and you talk about that, is, and that, what a great comment, because mm. really, to your point, business process, it's not about forming an ideal business process. In fact, one of the use cases he pointed out is in a procurement in a uh, Latin American country in Brazil, 12%, according to his stats, of the actual purchases that went through that country followed the standard business process. So using Rapid Miner, they were able to really isolate the 88% of the business process. So they have an ideal business process. 88% <laughs> of the order flow doesn't follow it. <laughs> and then you really begin getting into the predictive analytics of how do we begin altering, which one are the ones to prioritize, and then what do you begin doing to really move the needle around picking off the high value um, you know, orders that really should follow those, those processes. So I think that's a whole rich new area of innovation that predictive analytics is really, I think, it's been around for a long time. The legacy approaches, I think, have really been statistically oriented. Sample size, let's take the, you know, I, I like to jokingly summarize it, let me take the smallest sample and draw the, big, the <laughs> yeah, biggest yeah, yeah, inference yeah, from yeah, it. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. let me do the least work possible. You know, in the rapid minor context, the more data, the Kill better. sampling, Give sampling's me dead. everything. Yeah. The richer the data, mm the more likely we're going to have richer context and be able to make better predictive uh, decisions. And so that's something that I think is a really a sea change in the way modern, cutting edge data science platforms are really attacking this problem. Besides the fact that you can't, insight without action has no value. So it does no good to have a woohoo moment and you find the best predictive insight for particular customer segmentation analysis or you know basket affinity in a retail context and two guys in a trick duck know about that in your organization. You really now need to coordinate that insight both in the marketing area as well as the supply chain area, for example. And so I think it's that closing the loop that has significant business impact and that's what we're seeing and that's what's propelling our business. So there's a lot of action in this space. Yeah. You joined Rapid Miner last summer. I did. What was May. special in May. May? Excuse me. What did you see? What what was it that that really you decided to? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a bet on this horse. Okay. Couple things, Jeff. So first of all, um, it's important to know I'm a diehard New England Patriots fan. So moving to Boston, I mean, there's Not there's nothing bad about that. <laughs> okay, no downside there, as the as the uh, Patriots repeat. So um, that was a big draw for me. Um, but seriously, uh, Rapid Miner, I would say stepping back, um, I've had some experience in analytics themed businesses. Um, I was pleased to spend four and a half years with Tipco Software running a number of analytics themed go to market product groups. Before that, I was the co founder of another uh, New York based software company. Um, I just step back and say, really, when you take a macro view of the opportunity, analytics has been around for a very long time. Now we're finally in an era, and it picks up a little bit on what Dave talked about, in, particularly in the era of big data. We are now in an era where we can actually, nothing is impossible, let me put it this way. So you can actually take advantage of really taking all of the data in any form, at any scale, and you can answer any question. And when you think about how powerful that is and what Rapid Miner can really do to propel transformation in your business, it, it, it's a no-brainer. Um, I think for me, the opportunity to partner with Ingo and his team was just too good to pass up. Uh, he's a brilliant guy. He built the world's most recognized open source predictive analytics platform. And so we're really doing two things. We're both industrializing a product to have significant ubiquitous uptake across enterprise use cases. And then we're really uh, substantially increasing the velocity of how we go to market. And we're doing that in a way that is completely disruptive. Open source innovation 
married to enterprise industrialization, it's too good to pass up. So what should we be looking for in the next you know, 12, 18 months? What are your sort of objectives for the organization? What should observers like sure. us be, be paying attention to? Sure. I think that what you'll see is we're, um, we've been uh, well known to a pretty unique audience. Um, I think we're going to be aggressively um, establishing our ecosystem of partners in the big data space. And I think you see some of them here today, Hortonworks, Tableau, PwC, mm. many others will be joining us and we're aggressively investing in those relationships. I think it's fair to say that no one partner in the big data stack has all the goods. So I think it's very important for our joint customers that we're able to easily and seamlessly fit into the other significant investments they're making in data storage, in data visualization, and I think predictive analytics fits neatly into a, a full stack concept. So I'd say that's one area that I'd absolutely call out. I think a second area is, as I mentioned before, our marketplace. We, as an open source platform, have tremendous R&D and innovation uh, from our customers engaging with us across you know, hundreds of clients and dozens of use cases. But even more importantly, we don't have any delivery or consulting services capabilities. We rely on our external partners, our systems integrators and other partners, to work with our clients hand in hand. So we're now investing in a marketplace where all of those partners can really reach out and get repeatability around their field solutions built with our product. And I think that's a tremendous capability. We're already at something in the neighborhood of 15,000 monthly downloads today from a handful, 50 contributors in our marketplace. You'll see that number begin to move dramatically and you'll see the, not, the, uh, the contributors into that marketplace expand pretty significantly. So I'd say that's a second area that you'll see in the next 12 months. Innovate, tap the TAM, go deeper into the TAM, and then leverage the, the Absolutely. ecosystem. Absolutely. Right, Absolutely. Peter Lee, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. Go Pats, you got, you make a prediction? I think you just did, right? Well, it won't be pretty for you if you're a Denver fan, so. Um, <laughs> two or three interceptions, single digits on their side. I see a repeat of the Peyton Manning, Indianapolis Colts game when we won it 20 to three, something like that. Uh, in the Super Bowl, it'll be Carolina. It'll be, again, it'll be another repeat. It's going to be tough sledding if you're a Carolina Panthers fan. Um, it's going to be a lot of Superman action from our side of the fence. Love the so, confidence. You know. I hope you're right. Peter, yeah. Lee, I, great, it's a great, great count on it. Thank That's a so predictive. Much. I love it. You prediction better from Rapid better right. Right. Keep right okay. there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest, with our wrap, actually. This is theCUBE. We're live from Rapid Minor Wisdom 16. Right back. <laughs>